about spiritual warfare. And so I'm going to be using some, um, uh, I'm going to be demonstrating it and using examples based on uh, military training. And so today we're going to be talking about spiritual warfare, okay? So for the next couple of uh, Bible study, I don't know what's going on, hallelujah. But for the next couple of Bible studies, now I'm going, hallelujah, praise him. <laughs> hallelujah, y'all can hear me? Hallelujah. Okay, that's good. Um, for, but for the next couple Bible studies, we're going to be dealing with the topic of spiritual warfare. Amen? Amen. And so let's start off with uh, spiritual warfare. Look at somebody say warfare. Warfare. First thing we got to know about warfare is that there's no such thing as a fair war. All right? Even though that fair doesn't mean fair as in uh, the fair we're talking about, equal and you know, just or all. This is warfare. This is the how war goes about. These are the things of war. But there's nothing fair about war. Because it's always going to look bad regardless of what it is. But there is a war that's taking place right now. And this is not a fight between two or three, but rather a campaign of one kingdom against the authority of another kingdom. So you can't have warfare just, you know, uh, you fighting against your husband. There ain't no warfare. Uh, you fighting against your sister, brother. There ain't no warfare. Or your best friends or someone. Uh, warfare usually requires a campaign. And it's usually against one kingdom against another kingdom. So we can understand that it's really a campaign against the authority of another kingdom. So the devil is coming up against the authority of God's kingdom, right? And so now we find ourselves in this fight. As believers, we find ourselves in this fight. Once we came into the army of the Lord, right? Even before we came to that recognition or realized what side we was on, we was already part of the war. <laughs> so a war, just because you don't want to acknowledge one, doesn't mean one is, doesn't exist. A lot of times people are, are dying because they don't even realize they're in a warfare, that they're in a war zone. And so warfare, first got to understand is there's nothing fair about war. And you know, the thing about uh, once we realize that we're in a warfare, I think we'll change our mind on how we handle and deal with stuff. Can I get an amen there? Amen. Oh, well, if you don't get an amen yet, you understand what, what I'm about to say. When you are in a defensive position, it's almost always about surviving. When you're in a defensive position, it's most always about surviving. But when you're in an offensive position, it's about victory. It's about winning. Oh, I thought I had somebody shout right about now. See, what's wrong is we got too many people in a defensive position and they're in a war zone. And they want to win, but they're always on the defense. Jesus. And you can't win until you get on offense. All right. Look at somebody, you got to get on offense. Yeah. It's time to get on offense. The victory cannot be completed unless you're on offense. You, know, you ever see somebody running and they get to a place where they got to get on the defense? It's about survival. It ain't about winning the war. It's about staying alive. We got too many people in church, and I'm using that term loosely, that are in defensive position. Because you're always crying. You notice what I don't know, I don't see in the Bible? Believers complaining. You don't see none in the New Testament crying about, oh man, the snake bit me. Oh, man, they don't like me. Oh, man, they're trying to persecute me. Oh, man, uh, the, the, the Pharisee, they're always attacking me every time I preach a sermon. You don't hear them crying and complaining about that because they know that they're in a war. And they realize that the enemy is just not going to sit back and just let you have his way because he's trying to take over the kingdom. Okay, warfare. 
So once we realize that we have to get off the defense and get on the offense, our mindsets change. We're waiting for the enemy to come to our house and attack us before we stop praying. Hello. So therefore, you're in a defensive position. You think everything fine as long as everything good in your house. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. But guess what? No matter where you are, you're still in the war zone. Because yes, it's spiritual. Yes. It's not based on geography. Oh, come on. Because it's based on geography, then the war be fought in the church. All right. Literally. <laughs> It'll be fought in the church. And I think it is being fought in the church right now, the way some people act in church. Come on. When you got saints sitting on the one side of the room for the other side of the room talking about one another. Hello. That's because they don't know who they fight. All right. Let's, let's go. Because we're talking about spiritual warfare. Let's go to the uh, next thing we're going to talk about is the art of war. Some of you say, if you know your enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the results of a hundred battles. In other words, when you know who you are and you know who your enemy is, or in other words, if you know what side you're serving on and you know your opponent and you know why you're serving him, it's hard for anybody to defeat you. When you know you're on God's side and you know who your enemy is, most of us don't know who our enemy is because we're fighting flesh people instead of spiritual. Hello. We fight too much in the natural and not in the spirit. So he also say, if you know yourself, but not your enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. So in other words, it's a guess thing then when you don't know your enemy. Sometimes you can win, but then you turn around and lose. And guess what? Just because you won a battle don't mean you won the war. That's right. Sometimes the enemy will give you place here, but he still got control over your house. Oh, come on. Just because you win it financially don't mean you win it spiritually. I told you that measure spiritual growth by financial success. That's what the church is doing now. Based on how many cars you got. That's all people talk about. God is blessing me. God got, but God favors on my life. Just because you're winning spirit, uh, financially don't mean you're winning spiritually. Amen. Can I get an amen there? Amen. Why you still got such a nasty attitude? Jesus. Hello. If you were winning the war, yes. you might be winning the, uh, the battle financially, but spiritually you losing the war. You still out there acting like you don't know God. Hello. One sentence you love the Lord, next sentence you cursing the Lord. Oh, come on. So therefore, if you don't know yourself, and if you don't know the enemy and you know yourself, then it's one-on-one. -on -one. It's gonna be battles you lose and battles you win. But don't get it mixed up. Don't think you win. You just are uh, successful in certain battles. And the next part, he said, if you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. Hallelujah. I think too many of us don't know who we are, and we don't know who we're fighting, and that's why we lose it. I don't know about you, but I'd rather be on the victory side where I know who I am, and I know my enemy. That means I'm winning. Look at somebody and say, you winning then. But we never see ourselves in Scripture. We always see somebody else in Scripture. Wow. <laughs> so we always fighting against what we see with our eyes. Wow. Come on. Oh, come on. The Holy Spirit reveals stuff that you can't yes. see. Yes. Amen. And also what he, he'll show you, you, instead of always showing you somebody else. Amen. Oh, can I get an amen there? Amen. So a lot of times we don't know who we are. And warfare is based in deception. The enemy don't want you to see him. He wants you to see what you're fighting against, but not him in the background. All right. That's why the Bible said we fight not against flesh and blood, but against what? Yeah, we deal with spirits. So we're always fighting people we see. Wow. 
and don't know there's a spirit on the inside we need to be dealing with. So he's deceiving us to think whoever that cuts you out is your enemy. No, it's a spirit that's your enemy. Once you change the mind of that person, you change the spirit of that person. Okay. All right. Let, let me get into the meat of this thing. Let's go, because in warfare, in order to win a war, you got to have a strategy. Look at somebody and say strategy. Strategy. Let's go to Zechariah, the fourth chapter at verse 6. When you get there, say amen. For those who can read that up there, if you can't, pull out your Bibles. Hallelujah. It say, then he answered and spake unto me, saying, this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. In other words, the battle is spiritual. And if you're not spiritually minded, you're not going to win. Amen. The strategy of God is not based on what we see with our natural. The battle of God is going to be, uh, the, the kingdom of God is going to be won by the spirit. So we have to be in tune to the spirit because the spirit can, oh, come on, divert you away from trouble. It can keep you from losing your mind. Come on. Hello. It can keep you from losing your heart or your passion or your love for something. In other words, when we're directed by the spirit in the military, we will go one way, but we will come back another way. Why? Because we didn't want the enemy to set an ambush. See, some of y'all, your pattern is too recognizable. The enemy know when you come in, and he knows when you go out. He know when you pray, and he know when you're not. <laughs> come on. And he's going to catch you on the weekdays, not on your strong beats. Hello? Because he have a strategy to win, even though he can't. But y'all don't know that. <laughs> hallelujah. When you know God, hallelujah, you know who you serving. Hallelujah, you know what army you in. You know you got the victory. But our minds ain't made up to believe that we got the victory here. That's why we look like we're fighting a losing battle. But the strategy of God is easy. It's not by your might. It's not by what you know. It's not about how much money you got in your pocket. It's not about how intellectual you are. It's not about how smart you are. It's not about how you can reason among stuff. It's not about how you know folks. But it's about the spirit. Hello. See, sometimes we get caught up in might and we get caught up in power. But God said, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. I gave y'all an example how the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you if you listen. Because Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless, right? I give you a guide and I give you a teacher, right? And, and, and there was a time in the early part of my, uh, uh, my walk with God was that there was this girl I was dealing with. Y'all don't heard the story before. And, and uh, the Holy Spirit guided me away from a path I normally take. She was sitting there to ambush me. All right. Hello. Because early that day, uh, that, that week or the night before, uh, me and my wife got into a little discussion. You know. Oh, y'all don't talk. Y'all ain't like married folks don't get into discussions. Some of y'all get more than just discussions. Some of y'all get in some all-out fights. Now, why you be wearing them shades? It ain't because you, it's sunny outside. But we had a discussion. And in that discussion, you know, sometimes, hallelujah, when you don't feel appreciated, somebody come around and, oh, y'all don't want to talk up in here, and show you that they can appreciate you. Oh, come on, anyone trying to catch you when you're most vulnerable. Yes, Hallelujah. He ain't going to come up there when everything good. Hallelujah. He going to come up there when you got some stress in that relationship. Yes, and so she was sitting there because I was always coming out for lunch that way. Mm -hmm. 
So she sat there and was waiting for me at the palace. Hallelujah. But guess what? The Lord said, don't go that way today. And I listened to the Holy Spirit. And I went another route. And because I didn't want another route, I didn't know at the time that she was there. I couldn't see none of this. See, I'm talking about the unseen stuff. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I'm talking about around the corner. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost can see around the corner. Oh, yes. Y'all don't want to talk up in here today. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Because it was around the corner, I couldn't see. And therefore, he sent me another way. And I was like, I, I didn't understand. I'm always going this way. I'm always speaking to these people here. I'm always, they know, uh, you know, this is my way of chatting my way out. Going to lunch. Come on, y'all know y'all got your familiar routes. Yeah. But he sent me another route. And because he sent me another route, I avoided some situation. All right. mm, hallelujah. She probably had on her best perfume that day. <laughs> the one that I used to catch my nose before. Right. Oh, y'all don't want to talk. You know how when you was dealing with some folks? Oh, oh y'all don't want to talk right up in there. I'm just talking about my business. I ain't talking about your business. Hallelujah. So she know what perfume to wear. She know what colors to put on. Hallelujah. Had her eyes just flapping, flapping, flapping. Black and black. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm, I'm just assuming that because I ain't went that route. But I'm pretty sure she had a game on. All right. Hallelujah. But he took me another route. And because he took me the rock, the rock, I went and I was like, well, Lord, why you took me this way? And then at the end, when I came out to, to the point where I could look back, I saw and he showed me what was behind me. Right. He said, you just avoided that trap. Right. Hallelujah, I gave you enough time to get your mind right by getting this way, All by right. coming this way. I had a chance for you to get your mind right. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes we just got to listen. Not sometimes, but all the time. Just listen to what the Holy Spirit is telling us, and we'll avoid some trouble. Amen. Unseen yes. trouble. Yes. So it's not by might. Not by, I'm thinking, you know, I'm strong enough right now. I can walk down and pass anybody. Oh, come on. When you're at a weak spot in your life, you can be strong as you want. But that weak spot, he'll try and come in through that area. Can I get an amen there? Amen. So it's not by might. It's not by power. It ain't by how much word you know. It's by how much word you can live. All right. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Yes. Hello? It ain't about all the scripture you can quote. Mm -hmm. It's about living that scripture. Right. Come on, the devil know the Bible. Oh, but he ain't living none of them. All right. So it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. So the strategy of God is for us to listen to his spirit. It was his spirit, hallelujah, that will hover over the waters in Genesis. And he said, let there be light. And what happened? It came forth. So he got to come out of the spirit realm before it manifests in the natural realm. I wish I could get an amen right there. Amen. It's spiritual warfare we're fighting against. It's the unseen that causes us the most problem. All right. yes. Not about what you can see. If you know there was an accident and you could predict it, you avoid it. All right. That's good. <laughs> but since you are not like that, but the Holy Spirit is a observance of spirits. Yes. He see all the spirits. Yes. And he can guide you around some spirits. Yes. He'll guide you through some spirits. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. Yes. So not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So God has a strategy. And this strategy is based on obedience to him. See, as a general in an army, they got a strategy for victory. But what happened is the people who's supposed to carry out the plan and the strategy don't obey in wartime, if you don't obey a direct order, you get executed. Because you're not only putting yourself at risk, but you're putting your whole battalion at risk. Your platoon, come on, your squad, your platoon, your, your, your whole battalion. The whole division. The whole war. Because you're not obeying. So therefore, we have to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Can I get an amen there? If we're obedient to the Holy Spirit, we're winning this war. Even though the war has been won, but we'll be winning this war for the kingdom on this earth. Right. Amen. So, look at somebody and say, it's time to be obedient. It's time to be obedient. Not to man. Not to man. 
but to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Not to man, but to God. Because it's amazing how we're so obedient to the church. Yes. We're obedient to pastors. Right. We're obedient yeah. to organizations. Mm -hmm. But we ain't obedient to God. Yeah. What do you mean by all that? Hallelujah. There's people right now that follow preachers all over the place. But they ain't living nothing. They just like the personality. Come on, y'all don't want to shout right now. And so therefore, it's not about the person. It's about God. It's about obedience to God. I don't care how well your pastor preach. I don't care how well he does uh, all these things that, that, that uh, uh, you know, entertain us. If he ain't listen to the spirit, it don't matter. All right. Amen. I don't, Amen. This thing is just in vain. Amen. And if he listen to the spirit, he should be dealing with some of your issues Amen. some of the time. Amen. Amen. Hey, oh Lord, hallelujah. There might be a time he might miss it or miss you because there's somebody else. Come on, mature saints should know that, right? Amen. Sometimes the message ain't for you, but you know it's for somebody else. Hello. So sometimes we all agree to what he ain't preached because he ain't talking to me today. Well, he was dealing with somebody else. Hello. Y'all ever been seen the military? Sometimes the whole group get chastised, and sometimes it's just individuals. Hello. And so therefore, we have to realize what is conditioning everybody. Right. It's working for the good of everybody. And so, therefore, we have to realize there's a strategy. Look at somebody and say, there is a strategy. There is a strategy. All right, the next slide. Watch this. After the strategy, and we realize this, and we're being obedient, because we're being obedient to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is leading us and guiding us into all truth. It's the one showing us what to do. It's the one telling us how to defeat the enemy. And so, in order for you to have received, you got to first be recruited. Look at somebody say recruited. Recruited. Let's go to the book of Mark, the 16th chapter. Starting at verse 15. You know, we got to first become a part of the army in order for you to carry out the strategy of the army. Right. Can I get amen there? Amen. So we got to first realize what side we on. Recruitment part. Watch this. Mark 16, chapter, verse 15, say, and he said unto them, Go ye. What? <laughs> Into all the world mm -hmm. and do what? Preach. Preach the gospel to what? Every, Every creature. So he's not talking to the one who ever received yet. He's talking to the one who has. You can't recruit somebody in the military if you ain't in the military. Come on. Our recruiters was already been in there and there wasn't anybody that was on a lay level that had some stripes on them. Usually a non-enlisted officer, praise the Lord, hallelujah, and they had some bars on their arms. Yeah. Some scribes. There was a sergeant. There was no uh, uh, PFC and no uh, 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 PF1 and 2. No specialists. They had some bars. That means they done went through some stuff. That means they committed to this thing. And they saw the reason. They understand uh, that what war uh, incorporated. They understand that who they are fighting for. Mm -hmm. So there was recruiting. The disciples is what who recruit. See, well, I don't think, y'all got to check ourselves. If we ain't recruiting for the Lord, Amen. are we on his side? Because who we don't recruit stays in the kingdom of the devil. Look, it's only two kingdoms, right? Either you're on God's kingdom or you're on the devil's kingdom. Either the kingdom of light or the kingdom of darkness. Right? right? Amen. Can I just break those two down? Yes, I mean, it might have other types of kingdom, but it, it basically comes down to those two. You got a kingdom of light and you got a kingdom of darkness. And if you're not recruiting, what we're recruiting them out is the kingdom of darkness into the marvelous light. Amen. Hello. Amen. That way now they're on our side. Yes. Because if they ain't on God's side, then they got to be on the other side. Right. The side of opposition. He said, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Then watch this. 
And he that believes, look at somebody say, he that believes, believe is baptized, shall be saved. saved. But he that believes not shall be saved. Oh, come on. In other words, I'm giving you an opportunity to come out of the other side. And when you get saved now, oh, come on, you've been recruited. But if you don't believe, you ain't been recruited to the Lord. Just because you come to church don't mean you've been recruited. I'm talking about the kingdom of God. I ain't talking about the church organization. I ain't talking about the club. Because sometimes that's all it is. It's nothing but a club that just plays a different type of music. You ever seen people that shout all over the place? I don't dance, dance better than anybody else, but you look at it life outside of the dance. Right. They got church down pat. Come on. Amen. Got church down pat. I don't care what kind of dress you wear or don't wear. Hello. You can put on all that stuff on the outside. You can have all the words that make it sound good. Hallelujah. But if the heart ain't changed, you ain't on the right side. Because the word should bring a change to your heart. Yes. Yes. Ooh, okay. He said, he that believeth in is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. In other words, you're being recruited either for good or for bad. All right. And if you don't get recruited to the good side, if you don't believe, then you're going to be on the opposite side. Mm -hmm. You're going to be in the army of the devil. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't want to look at it like that. Because everybody, if you talk to everybody, all of them say. <laughs> everybody in church is saved. You even go to church, you say. Even if you don't go to church, you say. It's amazing at every funeral, everybody going to heaven. <laughs> Y'all ain't never been to funerals? Everybody going to heaven. And you don't see some life living. They be like, are oh, they talking about the same person? That's why you shouldn't be preaching a sermon about the person. You should be preaching people to God. Yeah. Ain't nothing you can do for a body. Nothing. After the eyes closed, ain't nothing you can do for them. There's no repentance after death. So, what side are you on? Ask somebody, what side are you on? Which side are you on? And here, at this point, at this junction, you can always be recruited to the other side. Recruitment is always going on. All right. <laughs> There's agents on both sides always trying to recruit. That's right. And if you're on the side of God, you should always be trying to recruit to God's side. Because right. believe me, the devil's always trying to recruit his side. All right. Whether they're aware of it or not. Oh, you know, this is an example of people recruiting for the devil don't even know they're doing it. Oh, you know, you ain't got to live all that. You ain't, you know, that's that, that just for them holy people. Right. You know, it's all right. You can get you a little bit. You can, you can shack up all you want. I don't even know if they use the word shack anymore. <laughs> but you can be babe and booed up all you want. You don't need no ring. Hello. You can still go and do all this stuff. It's fine. Hello. Who they recruiting for? The they recruit for sin, right? They recruit for the devil, right? Mm -hmm. But they don't see it like that. We all, we are imperfect. We all here, we all coming short. Yeah, but you don't have to keep coming short. All right. Come on. It's one thing. You ever had somebody you had to spot some money for? That mean that you went to a restaurant, went out to eat, and they was a little short? But if they're always short, oh, no. they ain't look, then they ain't just short. They just broke. Come on, you always got to go out there, man. Let me hold something. Every time I come out there, tell me I'm short. No, you always short. You just out. So, therefore, uh, falling sin is not practicing it. Sin is practice this thing. We come up short, but you should be practicing it. Hello daily base with us, but yet still we claim it that we know him. Well, if we know him so well, he should convict our hearts. Hello. We should be growing in this day. If you're not being, you're not growing in it, you need to go back through training again. 
All right, let me go on, let me go on, because I only got a few more minutes. Recruitment, all right? So he's recruiting us, right? Once you get recruited, then next thing you know, you have to make a decision to come in. You ever had a recruiter come to anybody, a family member you know of? Yeah. Rather than the military, well, Navy, Army, National Guard, Coast Guard, Reserves, uh, Air Force. They'll come up there and they'll go over all the benefits of it. See, we want that. Amen. We want the benefits without enlisting. All right. yeah. Heaven! Yeah. We want to go to heaven, but nobody want to die to get there. Nobody want to live for God to get there. So therefore, when you're recruiting, they go over all the benefits. They tell you what this, you can get this. You be traveling. You know, you have this. You receive all these things. You know, it sounds good. But then you got to enlist. You got to make a commitment to it. So let's go to Romans 10 and 9. It say that if thou shalt con what? confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall what? Believe. believe. Come on. Believe. I ain't talking about just because you say it. Uh -huh. But you also got to believe it. And shall believe in thy heart that God has what? Raised. Raised him from the dead. Thou shall be saved. See, we just take that literally and go with it. But we don't never manifest it in our lives. I'm talking about people that say, yeah, I know Jesus died for our sins. You know. But then have you accepted that to the point where not only he died for your sin and was raised, but now he's raised in you. Yes. When he's raised in you, he brings a change in you. That's right. Amen. See, we want a we want a literal Jesus. You know, we just want a word Jesus. We don't want him to manifest Jesus. We don't want him to be real Jesus. We just want to talk about Jesus. Oh. <laughs> come on. Hallelujah. We don't want him to come on the inside. The Bible said when he come in, greater is he that's in us yes. than he's in the world. So if the world is still winning in you, Jesus. check brother Jesus is in there. All right. Yes. I ain't saying whether you say or not say it. I'm just saying you can check yourself. Hello. You, you know... They got this little thing they, uh, they, they take and they put in your mouth and they can read your temperature. That's a gauge, right? Yeah. It, let, it lets you know if you overheat it or not, right? So I'm just saying the word is just going to gauge you to see whether you're a part of it or not. <laughs> All right, so Romans tell us that now is the part we get enlisted. So the first thing, once a recruiter comes, he says, All right. Boy, you can have all these things. Girl, you can have all these things. This is your only thing you gotta do is just enlist. Only thing you gotta do is confess it and believe it. And now you be a part of this army. Hello. That means that now once you enlist, you're no longer yours anymore. In the military, once we uh once we came, once we came into the knowledge of Christ, things change in our lives. Hello. When we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, things begin to change. When we went into the military, guess what? Things changed. You no longer became, uh, you was in uh, Uncle Sam's army. And when you're in Uncle Sam's army, what you used to do before, you can't do no more. Come on, because you've been enlisted now. Hello. When I got enlisted in the military, oh, man. I, I was like, oh, this is going to be good because, you know, the way the recruiter put it on there, everything is nice. See, we don't never tell the whole story. We always talk about everything going to be fine. Yeah, it's going to work out by and by. Hello. Can you say by and by? See, we think that once we give our life to Christ, oh, man, it's peaches and cream after that. They're everything, yeah, exactly. Once you enlist, that's when it stops. All hell break loose. You really start uh, engaging the enemy then. And so when we came into the military and we got enlisted, they, they was like, all right, once you get that oak, that creep, things change after that. You no longer belong to you. You belong to Uncle Sam. 
when you enlist in God's army, guess what? You no longer belong to you. You die to you. The Bible says we die daily. We crucify our flesh daily. So in other words, we have to drop off stuff. Hello. Some things should be falling off you all the time. When I went in, I, I, I wasn't this big, but I was big. They didn't put me on a fat boy diet. Hello. I was like 175. I was supposed to be like 155. And, and, and somewhere up in there. No, I was 185, I think it was. And so they put me on a fat boy's diet. And on a fat boy diet, that means that every time we had a uh, lunch, went to the mess hall, they had food out there, and people could select, but you on a fat boy diet. You had to come up there and say, I'm on a fat boy diet. <laughs> and then they, they didn't give you the food like everybody else did. They gave you a different portion, and there was certain stuff you couldn't eat. And I was like, oh, oh Lord. And then not only for the mess hall part, but every time we was going in and out of the building, when we was falling out of formation, we had to drop and do action push-ups. When everybody else was finished at PT, we were still doing PT because we was on a fat boy diet. Oh, come on. Because they was working on the stuff. In other words, when you come in, there's some stuff going to drop off. The stuff that you was carrying around and think, oh, this is not good, they're going to try and get that off of you. Yes, it was weight in the army, and it's weight in God. Come on there. There's some stuff that's wearing us down. Oh. There's some sin that are wearing us down that easily beset us. Right. And the longer you're in the law, the more these things should be falling off. Right. You should be cussing like you used to cuss. Amen. You should be lying like you used to lie. Come on. You should be backstabbing like you used to backstab. Come on. You should be talking about people like you used to talk about folk. Come on. You remember there was a time you gospel. Oh, man. You had that line. Burn up. Come on. All the time. Calling up folks. Girl, you know who to find, too. Y'all know exactly who to find. Anytime y'all need to know something, y'all call up Sh uh, Sh 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 Shekinah. Mm. <laughs> Shekinah. What's going on with that there? Oh, girl, you don't know. <laughs> Let me tell you. Let me give you the rundown. And then add, add, add stuff in there, too. Come on, you know you had to embellish that thing. You had to exaggerate it. You had to add your little twist to it. You had to put your little signature on it. Huh? But when you come into the Lord, that's a weight. Because when you start talking and, and, and belittling folks and, 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 and character assassinating them, you bringing them down. Hello. And so he said, these things should be coming off of you. The more you know the word, the more it should change you. I ain't saying you won't be perfect soon as you get saved, but after a while, come on. The Bible said we strive for perfection. We strive to become perfect. Hello. That means there's an effort at this thing over and over again. When you know you show that, you should be working on it. If you know you got a problem with that tongue, like CC, hallelujah. Amen. Just got to get the last word in. Oh, oh come on. <laughs> hallelujah. I'm, let me tell you a piece of my mind. You might not like it, but I'm going to tell it anyway. Oh, just go ahead and rattle it off. But after a while, the Lord should be dealing with you in that area and say, baby, just close your mouth. Because sometimes we try and go and unroll that bell. And you can't unroll a bell. Once the words go out there, they have to fulfill their assignment. Oh, come on. And sometimes it comes back ugly because you sent it out ugly. And so, you know, you ever say something to someone that you regret saying? Because you ain't thought about it. If you would have thought about it a little bit long, you remember mama would... Mom would turn your head around like exorcist. If you came out your mouth the wrong way. That's the generation I grew up in. Hello, hallelujah. This new generation, they can say anything. But the old generation, you say the wrong thing. Oh, man. You found your, your lips on the backside of your head. <laughs> that means you thought before you said anything. You might have been thinking it in your heart, but you just didn't let it come out of your lips. So we can have some discipline when we want to. Oh, come on. We choose not to. 
We choose. It's easier to say stuff on your mind than it is not to say stuff on your mind. And it's hard. Come on, that tongue is hard to control. I'm telling you, it is. And them words will stay out there for years. I told you the time, uh, my father might be listening on it now, but there was a time when, I remember he told me, he practically told me, you ain't going to be nothing, because I was drunk on the couch and didn't want to go to, to the family reunion in North Carolina. And he just saw my life. It wasn't going in the right direction. But that stuff stuck with me. I said, well, they ain't going to never be nothing. I might as well drink some more. And I stayed drunk for the next five or six years until the Lord came into my heart. Words are stink. Come on, y'all don't remember some things that some people say to you when you were at a young age. And stuck with you. And then you had a complex about it. He used to call you black. Well, I am black. Yeah. And it made it sound bad. Derogatory. Like, okay, well, ain't nothing I can do to change it. I tried Andy. <laughs> Don't work. <laughs> Hallelujah. You, you, I, I ain't had the money like Michael Jackson. Well, I'm going to leave that one alone. <laughs> I might have, might have lost some fans on the just now. But no, they say he had a, a skin disorder. But anyhow, uh, uh, you were in the skin that you were in. And sometimes people try to make you feel bad about it. And it'll stick with you. So you had a complex about it. There's some things people don't say about you because your nose didn't look like everybody else knows. And so all of a sudden, you know, you started covering up your nose and talking to folks. I used to have a problem with a gap in my teeth. And, you know, at first, it wasn't a problem until somebody stopped pointing it out to try and, you know, for the fact that I looked so good. They had to find some fault. I should get one amen. Hallelujah. At least one amen, huh? Jesus. Hallelujah. And after a while, you know, they started talking about it so much, it made me have a complex about it. To the point where I wanted to put on braces to close them up. But if you know who you are, you don't let what people say about you transform you. Amen. When you got low self-esteem, you allow people to talk in your life like that. Got to the point where I would try and cover up my mouth when I smile. But I was like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. It's like, that ain't me. I'm going to be who I am. I'm like people that don't even have value determine my value. I mean, you ain't got no, you, you, you don't press upon me nothing. But I'm putting so much into you. We're a lot of strangers. People don't mean nothing to us that tell us our worth. All right. Enlistment. Next thing after enlistment, so now you're in the army. After they enlist, they bring you up there and they do a full physical of you to make sure that you can go through this. Well, you qualify because you're born. You qualify for the army of the Lord because you're born. Hello. So if you are in this world, you qualify to be a part of his army. And so they give us this creed, 1 Peter, 5th chapter, verse 8 through 10, say, Be so, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, Walking about seeking whom he may devour. So I'm telling you this so that you don't get discouraged once you get in this army. That there's always going to be something coming up against you. Watch verse um, 9. Who resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same affliction, oh, y'all can shout right there, knowing that the same affliction are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. In other words, you ain't in this by yourself. Y'all act like y'all got a monopoly on pain. Y'all act like y'all got a monopoly on people talking about you. Y'all act like y'all the only one in the whole world. Hallelujah. That ever went through something. But here it tells us that knowing that the same affliction are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Because you are in the world and you are part of God's army, guess what? The devil got a right to attack you. 
But verse 9, verse 10 say, But the God of grace, ooh, thank you, Jesus, who have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, yes. establish you, and strengthen you, and settles you. Amen. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Remember, dominion means kingdom. It's about God's kingdom. We keep forgetting why we're fighting in this war. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the violence take it by force. Hello. We're too much on a defensive position. We got to get on the offense for God. We're quiet now. You know, believers should never be quiet. Because they know who they serve. Now, you're a Christian. You can be quiet. I'm going to let that stop there. Y'all like, what's the difference? There's a big difference between being a Christian and being a believer. Shall I elaborate? Christianity is a religion. And religion can put people in bondage. But Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that Oh, so he called us to be what? Believers. He didn't call us to be Christians. All right. The first time they mentioned Christian was in Antioch. Uh -huh. And then there was, as we was taught, there was told that it was in a derogatory sense. There were those Christians again. That means Christ-like. Uh -huh. But when we're believers, we are Christ. Yes. We are sent one. Because he's in us now. Thank you, Everybody can fall up in the category of being a Christian. Come on, let me give you an example. We got your own witness. Mm -hmm. we, we got, uh, 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 what's it called? Uh, um, uh, uh, with with um, Daddy Grace. The you got the Mormons. That's another one fall up on the Christians. Come on, what else? That, I'm just talking about that are big and mainstream, but all fall in the same category. Hello. We got Catholic, we got Protestant, we got Baptist, we got Methodist, we got Pentecost, we got Holiness, we got all these, and they all fall up in the same category. But if you want to talk to these individual groups, you will say, oh, everybody else going to hell. Mm -hmm. Except for them. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't want to talk right there. <laughs> when we was coming out, I don't like to call out church denomination because I, I don't think people are I'm attacking church denomination. I'm just saying that is a form of religion and religion can put you in bondage. And so, therefore, and everybody calling themselves Christians don't act Christ-like. Right. But that was like, I'm a Christian. Okay, so you up under that religion. But believers go beyond Christians. Right. A believer believes the things of God. A Christian is like, you know what, I'm picking and choosing what part of the Bible I want to serve. Just because you go to church, you can be a Christian just going to church. That's just your membership. All right. But believers do more than just go to church. All right. Hallelujah. They live that word. Hallelujah. Yeah. They believe that word. They exercise in that word. Hallelujah. They share that word. They do like Jesus said. Go ye out into all the world and preach the gospel yeah. to every creature. Yeah. Baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yeah. So believers take God's word for it. For what it is. They don't shape it up to be what they want it to be. That's why we don't make God to be what we want him to be. Not what the word is saying. Because if it doesn't line up with our, what we believe. Then it ain't God. What do you mean by that? We shaped it based on what we're going through. Hello. When you're single. And the Bible tells us to abstain from sex. We don't want to go there. Talk about it. Right to the when he says stay away from the Bible, say let not fornication be once named among you. Yes. See, we don't even deal with fornication in the church. Mm -hmm. Now they'll no, no, no. I got to have my boo. I got to have my baby. I got to get me some. Mm -hmm. Oh, see, <laughs> <laughs> see, because it's not it's not ministered enough. You have to understand when it's not ministered enough, it's acceptable. And then they were like, well, the Bible says you do these things, then you shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. And so if you're not inheriting the kingdom of God, then you must inherit another kingdom. All right. And therefore, you can fall on the Christian.
Christianity because you're picking your God. You're picking how he accepts things. Well, God knows my heart. Yes, he does. And you do too. It ain't lining up with the word. So therefore, but we don't minister that because you don't hear that in church often, do you? We don't deal with adultery, we don't deal with fornication, we don't deal with lying and drunkenness and all this stuff because nowadays everybody's doing it in church and so they don't want to talk about it. That's true. Only thing we want to talk about is God going to turn it around. Yes, prosperity. He's going to turn it around and around and around. I don't know about you, but y'all should be dizzy by now. As much as God been turning it around, every sermon you preach about turning it around. How many times are you going to turn it around? If you're going to turn it around back in the circle, you're back in the same place again. <laughs> turn it around. Come on. We got to stop playing with people emotion in church. And just give them the truth. And let them decide. But we try to hide it because we want to entertain folks in church. Yes, 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 yes. We just want our choir to be big and sing well on Sunday, hallelujah, and talk about we had church. What is that anyway? What, what do we mean by we had church? I don't even know why we here. What do you mean by we had church? We had church today. I thought you were the church. Huh? The Bible said we are the temple of God. I thought you were the church. He said, I'm coming back for a church, right? Without a spot of wrinkle, right? Mm -hmm. So he ain't talking about these buildings, because y'all know all these buildings got a spot on them. Oh. Got some blemish on them, right? Mm -hmm. So he ain't talking about the building itself. He's talking about the people. Amen. Talking about we had church today. Mm -hmm. But then you go out and do all the other stuff once you finish your church. Yeah, yeah, just like y'all know when y'all used to go out and party. Mm -hmm. Oh, we had party. Oh, man, we threw down. We was lit. Yeah. We were lit last night. That thing was lit. <laughs> oh, it was lit. We were turned up. Man, all that. So that didn't mean that the party was jamming. It was jumping. Huh? So that mean your flesh was just entertaining. And that's how we now. We went to church. We had church. Church. That's we had church. That mean it was lit up in church. Man, they were singing up in there. They were singing your song. What happened when they don't sing your song? All right. Jesus. It's amazing. Hallelujah. They ain't at church because they didn't sing my song. Or they didn't let me lead a song. Sit your butt down. You don't need because you're singing in the wrong spirit in the first place. Hallelujah. So we, we go through the creed. This creed is designed that when you are going through some trouble, that when you're going through a hard time in your life, this creed is supposed to uh, uh, inspire you. It, it's supposed to reignite you. It's supposed to light you up again. To let you know, hey, remember, that enemy is always out there like a roaring lion. He's always trying to destroy you. He's seeking you. He's trying to bring you out of the kingdom of light back into the kingdom of darkness. The Bible says we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So we have to be enlisted in his army because we was in sin. We were born and shaped in iniquity. Mm -hmm. So we have to be reborn, right? Amen. Hello. Amen. We have to be born again. And I ain't talking about going back in your mother's womb because that's kind of ridiculous, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, Nicodemus say that to Jesus. Jesus say, I thought you was a learned man. Mm -hmm. How do you not know I'm talking about the spirit? That your spirit need to be born again. Amen. Because a lot of times we've been indoctrinated by uh, other people's belief and what they feel. Come on, our mamas, our dads were one of our first teachers. Amen. And they didn't go to church. We're like, you ain't went to church most of the time. And they went to church and they came home and they went at each other. Like they ain't heard a word. <laughs> they was at church though. And as long as you go to church, fulfill an obligation. Right. That was it. That was qualifying you to get to heaven. Without a relationship with God. Jesus. See, it's not about the relationship anymore. We don't even want the relationship with God. We just want what God has in his hand. Y'all yeah, had somebody always come up and you just want something from you. Oh, that's all. If you got something in their hand, they fine. When you ain't got nothing in their hand, they talk about you. 
Come to the one that always borrowed money from you, but never knew how to pay it back? Hello. That's a user, right? That's what they want to do now. They just want to use God for what he can give to them. And it's all about prosperity. I don't know about you, but your prayer shouldn't always be about a house and a car. All right. And a, excuse me, in a spouse. Mm -hmm. Hello. <laughs> it should be about a closeness with God. Amen. Lord, help me to be better. Yes. Help me to be like your son, Jesus. Yes. Help me to live a, a righteous life here on this earth, Lord. Help me to please you, God. You. Teach me, Lord. Teach my hands out of war. Teach me how to pray more. Yes. Teach me how to fast more. Yes. Teach me how to love my enemies. Yes. Teach me how to forgive folks. Mm -hmm. Teach me, Lord. Yes. Teach me not to speak bad about folks yes. and talk about folks, but to lift them up and be an encourager. Yes. Teach me not to be so negative. That should be our prayer. As opposed to, Lord, I sure need a better job. Lord, I, I need a promotion. Lord, I need more materialistic stuff. And then you get that and you get further away from God. Hello. That's why Jesus is hard for a rich man in the kingdom of heaven than it is for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Because the more stuff you got, the more distracted you become. You know, there was a time, let me just go back a little bit. There was a time when in the in, in, in the African American church was full on Sundays because we didn't have as much. But when we start going up in our money, we start getting away from God. All right. But there was a time when we didn't have much, so we came to church to pray for more. All right. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. There was a time, y'all might not remember, but everybody didn't have a car. Now we got three and four in our yards. Oh, come on. And then we don't, we don't bless God anymore. We was thankful when God blessed us with stuff before. Now we just take for granted. Hallelujah. Only when he come through what seems to be a miracle for you that you give him praise. What about all the rest of the time? Thank God for waking you up this morning. Thank God you woke up in your righteous mind this morning. Thank God you're in your right health this day. Thank God, hallelujah, he blessed you to see another day. We take for granted the small things. A person who has no legs is, will be thankful to wake up every morning with legs. But we don't take, we, we take for granted those things. The basic things we're taking for granted. Amen. Oh, I'm about to run out of time. Amen. Praise God. Well, I did tell you it's more. It's four parts to this lesson. Well, I can't say four parts because today we didn't get through too many sheets. So, but we're in a series on warfare. 